hello friends uh, in this video again i am going to discuss about ezr so this is the final part 2 of the same same topic so in previous video we have discussed what ezr is and uh, how it works so basically we have seen that ezr technology is used to reduce nox emission from a diesel engine uh, but at the same time ezr technology has certain disadvantages because there is a trade off between nox as well as uh, uh, hydrocarbon particles soot particles or particulate matters so if, you know, on the one side you are reducing the percentage of oxygen in inside your engine so that your nox emission is reducing but on the other side because of reduced uh, amount of oxygen the amount of unburnt fuel will increase inside the engine and uh, it in, it will again increase the amount of your hydrocarbon as well as uh, soot particles so there is a trade off between nox and uh, hydrocarbon particles which we have seen yesterday okay and that is why uh, there is a need to decide an optimum quantity of ezr percentage uh, which which can reduce the nox amount significantly at the same time it should not increase uh, the percentage of uh, your hydrocarbon unburnt hydrocarbon percentage of carbon monoxide such as co and other uh, emissions significantly okay so today we will see uh, different percentage of ezr what is its effect on on a diesel engine okay so this is part 2 if you have not watched part 1 of the video then please stop here go back and first watch part 1 and then come here and then watch part 2 then only you will be able to understand the concept completely okay so moving ahead uh, these are the information about me and uh, first of all we will see the effect of different percentage of ezr on engine diesel engine performance so what has happened in uh, this experiment is there has been a diesel engine has been taken for for this particular purpose and different percentage of ezr as you can see over here uh, 0% ezr with blue line then 10% ezr 15% and 20% has been different kind amount of ezr percentage has been Uh, mixed with uh, fresh air and uh, has been used inside the engine and then its effect on different parameters of engine as well as emission uh, which is coming out of exhaust has been seen and then uh, we will see what is the conclusion of this study so this is the first first graph of of this study in which you can see the the graph between thermal efficiency on on y axis and engine load that is rated percentage of rated load on on x axis So this blue line is is your zero percent EZR and other lines are different percentage of EZR. So as you can see, uh, lower at lower load below forty percent load, the thermal efficiency is slightly increasing if you use EZR. Okay, but at higher load the difference is insignificant. Most of the time our tractor or any diesel engine is going to operate in this range only forty to eighty percent range only. Okay, not below forty percent in most of the cases, and not eighty, not above eighty percent. Tractor engine does work in this range also, but majority of the time it will be operate in this range only. But and in this range, if you can, you see there is slight difference with easier thermal efficiency is increasing little bit, but that is not very significant. So basically, we can say that there is no effect at all on thermal efficiency in actual working range of of a diesel engine. Okay. and uh, now you can correlate this thermal efficiency with engine power so basically the thermal efficiency is how much percentage of actual fuel we are able to convert into useful work that is what thermal efficiency you can read about it on google also so basically when thermal efficiency is increasing it means that you are able to utilize maximum percentage of your fuel into useful work so basically uh, <coughs> that is helpful actually and when thermal efficiency is decreasing it means a uh, majority of of your uh, energy of your fuel is going to be wasted okay so thermal this is the effect of ezr on thermal efficiency now the second is uh, fuel consumption so on y axis is bsfc back specific fuel consumption on x axis again is load so again as we can see in lower load range uh, bsfc is decreasing by using ezr okay so this blue line is ezr line which has highest bsfc so bsfc is reducing it means that fuel consumption is basically reducing in lower range in upper in but in, again in working range you can see th this effect is insignificant in some cases 10 to 15 percent ezr uh, it is increasing bsfc is increasing also in some cases it is decreasing also that is why fuel consumption uh, with ezr is kind of non conclusive it's uh, sometime it is decreasing sometime it is increasing it depends upon the condition of engine and other other condition on the condition also 
so why it is happening is because of the basic concept as i explained in my previous video that is here we are mixing exhaust gas to absorb some of the heat energy from uh, from combustion chamber and if we are reducing the amount of oxygen so the amount of fuel which is going which is burning inside the engine is reducing if you use EGR and that is the reason fuel consumption is reducing at lower load but at working range again this the effect is kind of insignificant okay now next is uh, exhaust gas temperature so here clearly you can see that with EGR in all range uh, the temperature is reducing and that is why we are using EGR that is one of the reason of using EGR so that it should reduce the temperature of uh, exhaust gas or temperature of engine so that NOx emission will reduce because NOx emission is, is related to temperature if, if the engine temperature is high NOx emission will be high because you see you might have read that nitrogen is kind of inert gas at lower at room temperature or at normal temperature range but at higher temperature nitrogen reacts with oxygen and makes, uh, makes NOx NOx which is very harmful so the basic concept is to reduce the temperature and that is what is happening over here which we can see clearly okay now the next one is volumetric efficiency so we can see uh, with EGR volumetric efficiency is reducing with non EGR is 85 percent around volumetric efficiency and then it is consequently decreasing consistently decreasing with uh, increasing percentage of EGR okay so this is something uh, which is reducing the engine performance so uh, the amount of air which is going inside is reducing and that is a volumetric efficiency is reducing with EGR okay so these are the effect on engine performance now we will see what is the effect on emission for which EGR is being used actually so we can see here the amount of CO which is uh, being produced by the engine now for, uh, without EGR CO is least you can see here and with EGR percentage of CO is increasing so as I have already explained yesterday and today also that uh, there is a trade off between NOx emission and CO emission so if you are reducing NOx your CO emission will increase so you can see that there is an increase in CO emission but again if we see for 10% EGR the increase is not very significant so gram per kilowatt hour uh, if, if it is if we see for around uh, 80 uh, percent load then this is uh, 9 kilo 9 gram kilowatt hour per kilowatt hour and for 10 percent easier uh, the this ratio is around 9.2 9.5 so the increase is not significant for 10 percent easier as you can see now again if you see for hydrocarbon this also again will increase so if you are reducing the NOx then your hydrocarbon percentage is going to increase so again if you see for 80 percent load the increase is from around uh, 19 percent to somewhere around 20 percent so 1 to 2 percent or 3 percent increases is there in, uh, in, in gram per kilowatt hour in hydrocarbon also so as i already told so if you reduce NOx CO content and hydrocarbon content will increase and you can see clearly in this graph it is increasing but the increase is not that much significant in case of 10 percent easier or even up, up to 15 percent easier you can say up to a certain extent depending upon again load okay now the third one is opacity when i say opacity it is basically a smoke opacity a smoke opacity means if, if a smoke opacity is more it means that the amount of particulate matter or unburnt carbon is higher in uh, in, in the smoke so again this is a part of uh, hydrocarbon or the unburnt hydrocarbon which we have seen in previous slide so again this this uh, smoke opacity is you can see as you can see here is increasing with uh, easier okay so with 10 percent easier there is there is around uh, 10 to 15 percent increase in smoke opacity so it means that or it shows that uh, there are more unburnt carbon particle and more unburnt fuel particle available in in, in exhaust gas which is increasing the opacity of a smoke okay or exhaust gases now the next finally we will see NOx emission impact on NOx emission so this is mainly for which uh, this exhaust gas is uh, EGR technology is being used so if we see clearly there is a trend that with EGR NOx emissions are reducing and it's reducing significantly if you, you take example of 80% uh, the with without EGR the NOx emission is around around 3.2 3.3 gram per kilowatt hour whereas uh, with 10% it is 2.5 around 2.5 so there is significant reduction and it, this reduction is actually increasing with load so if you have more load then more reduction is there so you can see that around 30 to 40 percent this data say that 
around 40 to 44 percent reduction is there in NOx emission between no is here and 15 percent is here you see 15 percent is here the reduction is even more significant okay and this is the reason clearly it says uh, that uh, easier is successfully can successfully reduce uh, the emission of NOx inside an engine but again as uh, we were discussing how much percentage so we can say that 10 percent easier or 15 percent easier the NOx emission is with 15 percent easier NOx emission is very significant with 10 percent also it is very significant and at the same time 10 percent and 15 percent as we have seen in other graphs is not going to affect your engine performance very significantly and at the same time it is also not going to increase your hydrocarbon content as well as your, your CO content very significantly. So we can say that up to 10 percent or in some cases even 15 percent easier can be used with engine without compromising on, uh, on the hydrocarbon emissions and CO emissions and engine performance and it can significantly reduce NOx emission of our diesel engine okay now we will see some, some of the impact on our engine parts as i have told you in my previous video that because of higher carbon content deposits on engine parts will increase so this you can see without easier this is the cylinder head how it looks like and with easier you can see clearly there are carbon deposits everywhere okay so this is basically not, this is going to uh, make your engine wear out engine parts wear out very fastly okay again then fuel injected tip you can see which easier how much carbon percentage or carbon deposits are there and this is without easier now this is engine piston rings this is without easier and this is with easier so as you can see clearly everywhere uh, because of use of easier uh, your engine is going to be around fast your performance will slightly deteriorate or remain same uh, your NOx emission will reduce significantly at the same time your hydrocarbon as well as carbon, carbon monoxide emission will increase, uh, increase but as we have seen that up to 10 percent and even in some case 15 percent easier rate is very effective to reduce NOx emission substantially without deteriorating the engine performance significantly okay so this much percentage 10 to 15 percent percentage can be used now thing is as we have seen it is uh, reducing some performance aspects so that is why we are using most in most of the cases epr technology is being used in combination with other technologies such as turbochargers intercooler and diesel particulate filter now what is the use of dpf so as you have seen that uh, in case of egr your co emission as well as your hydrocarbon emissions is increasing so if you use diesel particulate filter dpf then it will simply trap those particulate matters and dpf technology is used to reduce that hydrocarbon emissions so if you use no, uh, easier along with dpf it will solve both of the problem it will reduce nox at the same time it will reduce hydrocarbon also and now most of the cases we are using turbocharger also so whatever little bit performance issue will be there because of easier that can be solved with turbocharger now a lot of people were asking me what will, what will be the impact of EZR on tractor BHP. So as we have seen that there is no direct relationship between EZR and uh, BHP. Although thermal efficiency has a relationship but thermal efficiency is actually increasing with EZR not decreasing. Okay, So EZR technology as such is not going to affect the engine power but uh, most of the time EZR will be used with turbocharger. More often than not it will be used with turbocharger. When turbocharger will be used it will be increasing your power little bit so at, at, at times you feel that your tractor is producing more tor torque or more power and that is not because of easier that is mainly because of turbocharger so I'll make a, uh, I might make a separate video on turbocharger technology okay so that is not a scope of this video but that is because of whatever power issues are there that is mainly or mostly because of turbocharger not because of easier although easier reportedly increasing thermal efficiency in some cases but, but that is kind of insignificant okay so I hope that you understood the concept well. So that's all about uh, easier. These are some of the references which I have used. And thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and enjoy working hard. And do watch both the videos, both part, part one and part two. And I hope it, it helps in understanding the concept. Thank you very much.